the next chapter measurement of physical quantities now the first question is how are the various articles and the materials shown in the picture measure now you can see in the pictures given below here the first this brinjals they are measured in grams when you go to the market then the length of the thread is measured in meters then the vegetables here it is also measured in grams then the milk in a glass is measured in liter the gold is measured in grams or milligrams and the length of the cloth it is measured in terms of meters so now let us see what do you mean by the physical quantity in day to day life we measure many things such as weight of the fruits vegetables food grains temperature of the body or some liquids volume of the liquids density of various substances the speed of the vehicles etc so the quantities such as mass weight distance speed temperature volume are called as the physical quantities now whenever we you uh, this uh, we measure the quantity we use a value and a unit is used to express the magnitude of the physical quantity for example swarali walks 2 kilometers every day in this example 2 is the value and kilometer is the unit used to express the magnitude of the distance which is a physical quantity now let us next see what do you mean by the mass and the weight of the object now mass it is the amount of matter present in a substance now mass has a tendency as a natural tendency to resist a change in its state which is called as inertia this means that if any object is lying so when we are uh, pushing that object or when we are applying certain force on it then it has got certain tendency to resist a change in its state so that is called as the inertia thus mass is the qualitative measure of the inertia of an object larger the mass greater is the inertia also mass it is a scalar quantity it does not change from place to place anywhere in the world now the quantities mass and weight are however different now unit for measuring mass is gram and kilogram now next we will see what do you mean by the weight of an object and how it is different from mass what we measure in grams kilograms is the mass and not the weight now the gravitational force that acts on this mass is called as the weight now this gravitational force means what it is the force by which the earth attracts an object towards its center is called the weight of the object therefore weight is a scale vector quantity it is different at different places on the earth it is diff also we know it decreases as we go away, uh, at higher altitudes from the surface of the earth naturally when the gravitational force is changing this means the weight of an object will also change from place to place at the sea level the gravitational force is maximum so there the weight of an object will be maximum as we move towards the poles there also the gravitational force is different and so the gravity so the mass of the or the weight of the object will also change so thus here before seeing this thus weight it is a vector quantity it is different at different places on the earth now after this let us see what do you mean by the scalar and the vector quantities now the quantity that can be completely expressed by its magnitude alone is called as the scalar quantity for example 
only magnitude that is the value with the unit is used to express a uh, quantities such as length breadth area mass temperature density time work etc thus length of the tunnel is 2 kilometers means 2 is the value and kilometer is the unit fever is 101 degree fahrenheit means 101 is the value and fahrenheit is the unit so this only value and the unit is used for measuring the or for expressing the quantities so such quantities they are called as the scalar quantities now the vector quantities the quantity that is expressed completely only when magnitude and direction are both given is called a vector quantity now displacement velocity are vector quantities because they have the value uh, magnitude as well as direction for example the displacement of 20 kilometers towards the north or displacement of 10 kilometers towards the east so north east this gives you the direction so and 20 kilometers it gives you the magnitude of displacement so the displacement it is a vector quantity then the aeroplane flying at a height of 500 kilometers per hour towards Mumbai so 500 kilometer per hour this is a magnitude and towards Mumbai it is the direction so displacement velocity these are the vector quantities now next we will see why would be the weight of an object be maximum at the poles and minimum at the equator now the gravitation force at the poles is maximum at the poles and minimum at the equator so the weight is maximum at the poles and minimum at the equator now why is the weight of an object at high altitude less than the weight at the sea level again the same reason we can write gravitational force at high altitude is less than that at the sea level so naturally the weight of an object at high altitude is less than that at the sea level now the next question is will it be possible to use one and the same unit to measure physical quantities such as mass weight distance velocity and temperature no same unit cannot be used to measure the different physical quantities different physical quantities will have different units in everyday affairs we measure many physical quantities as these physical quantities they are different from each other their units of measurement will also be different now next we have to see here see there in this bracket this do, uh, box do you know now our body has weight because of the gravitational force of the earth now gravitational force of the moon being less our weight will turn out to be less there now the gravitational force on the surface of the moon it is just one sixth of the gravitational force on the surface of the earth this means if the man weighs 60 kg on the surface of the earth then one sixth of 60 is 10 kg he will weigh only 10 kg on the surface of the moon if you had visited the Nehru planetarium there you can see your weight on different planets and on the moon that way those weighing machines are calibrated so there as the different planets and the moon have got different gravitational force your weight will also change on the different places now next we will see this here what do you mean by the standardized measurements now take a ball of string let one student from the class measure four hand spans of the string and cut it there let each of the other students in the class be asked to 
cut four hand spans of the string two. Now hold the, all the pieces together by one end. You will see that all these different strings cut out of length four spans by different students will be different because the length of the hand span of the different students is different. Naturally, the four hand spans length of the different students will be different. And so we can say from this that hand span cannot be a unit for measuring the length of the string. Now, measure the length of the bench by means of the span of your hand. And ask your friends also to do the same. Did each of them obtain the same measure? You will see that no, it's different. All the students, they are dif of different sizes. So their hand span length are also different. Naturally, the length of the, uh, length of the hand span will be different. So... This means that standardized measures are required for measuring things. So such measures are called as the standard units. Now standard units means meter, centimeter, kg, uh, grams, then uh, Fahrenheit, degree Celsius. All these are the different standard units which are seen all over the earth on anywhere in the world. So naturally, when we say one meter of the string means it will remain same all over the world. We have to measure some physical quantities accurately. To measure any quantity, we use the unit specified for it. For example, meter which is denoted by small m. This is the specified unit for measuring length. A certain distance has been ex accepted as the standard for one meter. Now, why is there a need for such standard unit? Because if the span of hand is accepted as the unit for measuring length, then with this unit, we can measure length of the cloths as two hand spans, three hand spans, four hand spans, depending upon the length of the hand span of the person who is measuring it. However, the length of the class, length of the cloth measured by each one of us will come out to be different. That is why the hand span cannot be a standard unit for measuring length. Now, here in the uh, box you see here, prevailing systems of a measurement. Now there are two prevailing systems of measurement MKS system and in MKS M stands for meter, K for kilogram and S for seconds. In this system distance is measured in meter, mass in kilogram and time in second. Now in CGS system the distance is measured in centimeter mass in grams and time in seconds. So in this method, in the MKS system of measurement, distance, mass and time are accepted as the fundamental quantities. These three quantities are used to measure all other quantities. Now this table is given here. So this table you can complete. Distance, mass is measured in MK system as kilogram and in CCS system as grams. Distance is measured as in terms of meters and in CGS system it is centimeter. Time is same. S stands for second in CGS system as well as in the MK system. Now speed is given by the formula distance upon time. So in MK system unit will be meter per second and in CGS system it will be centimeter per second.